Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 2nd of October. Protests intensify in India after police peddles no rape theory in Hathras gang rape case. Balochistan facing pandemic of impunity and abuse of rights, activists tells UN. And tourism reviving from COVID blow in India's hill station Kufri. And now for all the details. Widespread protests continued across India on Friday to demand justice for a 19-year-old girl belonging to the lowest rung of the country's caste system who was allegedly raped by four upper caste men on September 14. Police on Thursday said that there were no rape traces found in the post-mortem report of the victim who succumbed to injuries earlier this week. Members of different political parties on Friday joined in the widespread protests across India over the alleged gang rape of a 19-year-old girl who belonged to the lowest rung of the country's caste system by four upper caste men. Protesters willing to visit the family of the victim in Hathras of northern Uttar Pradesh state were stopped by local police from entering the district, giving excuse of the pandemic time and prohibitory Section 144 imposed to bar gatherings. Police on Thursday stated the gang rape victim's death is being exploited by some people to stir up caste tensions. Earlier in the day, a senior police official said a post-mortem report indicated that there were no traces of sperm found in the samples collected from the victim. Protests sparked across India by rights activists and political parties after the Hathras victim died in Safdajang Hospital in Indian capital New Delhi on September 29. Her body was allegedly cremated by the local police forcibly on the same day without her family's consent. India on Friday paid homage to iconic freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi on his 151st birth anniversary. Known as the father of nation, Mahatma Gandhi played a key role in India's fight for independence from British rule through a non-violent struggle. Indian President Ramnath Govin led the nation in paying homage to iconic freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi at his memorial in New Delhi on his 151st birth anniversary on Friday. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with other leaders also offered flowers at Rajghat, the resting place of the father of the nation, to pay his respects to Gandhi. Globally, Mahatma Gandhi's birth anniversary is celebrated as the International Day of Non-Violence, the ideal that Gandhi fought for throughout his life. Meanwhile, in Mahatma Gandhi's primary abode, Sabarmati Ashram in western Ahmedabad city, prayers were held with a minimum presence of people without any elaborate programs because of the prevalent pandemic conditions. वो परंपरा आज चालू रखने के लिए जो भी नियम है डिस्टेंस का और बाकी का वो नियम रखके बहुत ही मर्यादित संख्या में हमने यहाँ सर्वधर्म प्रार्थना का छोटा सा एक आयोजन कोई वक्तव्य और कोई प्रोग्राम नहीं है सिर्फ प्रार्थना करके हम अलग हो जाएं। Born on October 2, 1869, in Porbandar town of Western Gujarat state, Mahatma Gandhi played a key role in India's fight for independence. He was assassinated on January 30, 1948, almost five months after he led India to freedom from British rule through a non-violent struggle in 1947. In news from Pakistan, 
Former Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, while hitting out at the incumbent PM Imran Khan-led government, has said he would no longer remain quiet on the dual standards of accountability in his country. Sharif's remarks came as in response to his recent speeches against the government. The Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority has banned the broadcast of speeches, interview of absconders or proclaimed offenders. Former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has called out the incumbent government of Pakistan for what he termed its dual standards of accountability, saying he can no longer remain quiet on the matter. Addressing a meeting with his PMNL party leaders through a video link from London on Thursday, Sharif asserted, although Prime Minister Imran Khan is to blame for the country's current state, it's those who brought him into power who are truly responsible. Sharif's remark came as in response to his recent speeches criticizing the government. The Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority has banned the broadcast and rebroadcast of any speech, interview or public address of absconders or proclaimed offenders. Sharif has been declared an absconder as he is a convict in an event field corruption reference and was allowed to go to London only on medical treatment in 2019 on bail. But he has not since then returned to Pakistan. Moreover, a Pakistani court on Thursday ordered authorities to seize Sharif's assets during a hearing of a case filed by the country's anti graft body, National Accountability Bureau. Moving on. Baloch activist Munir Bengal told the UN Human Rights Council this week that Balochistan is facing a pandemic of impunity and abuse of rights. He urged stringent action against Pakistan, overizing cases of enforced disappearances in the region. Balochistan is facing a pandemic of impunity and abuse of rights, Baloch activist Munir Mengal told the United Nations this week while urging appropriate actions to ensure stringent action against Pakistan over rising enforced disappearances. While speaking at the 45th UNHRC session in Geneva, Mengal highlighted a number of cases of Baloch missing persons registered with the UN working body on enforced disappearances. Yet their family members have not heard any information either from Pakistan or from the world body. The number of victims is in thousands. Victims include Baloch political and human rights activists, students, females, kids, infants, and the practice of disappearing is going on daily basis. The silence of the judiciary and the lack of interest from UN bodies has accelerated the culture of disappearing with impunity. Activists accuse that Pakistan army has been carrying out so-called military operations in Balochistan for years with an aim to eliminate the indigenous people and ethnic minorities in the wake of China-Pakistan economic corridor project. Thousands have been internally displaced because of armed conflicts and army operations over the years. U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalizad arrived in Doha on Thursday where the Afghan peace talks are taking place. He later met Taliban leaders and their chief negotiator amidst delay in the start of the direct negotiations between both sides of the talks. Taliban spokesman Mohammad Naim in a series of tweets said that in the meeting it was insisted that more efforts should be made for the implementation of the U.S.-Taliban agreement. Amidst delay in the start of the direct negotiations between both sides of Afghan peace talks, Taliban spokesman Mohammad Naim on Friday in a series of tweets said that U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation Zalme Khalilzad on Thursday met with Taliban leaders including Chief Negotiator Malvi Abdul Hakim in Doha. Naim said it was insisted in the meeting that more efforts should be made for the implementation of the U.S.-Taliban agreement. The release of Taliban prisoners was also discussed in the meeting. Khalilzad's Doha visit comes at least three weeks after the inauguration ceremony of Afghanistan's peace negotiations in the Qatari capital. Negotiating teams of both sides are yet to agree on two out of 20 articles. According to reports, the Taliban demand recognition of U.S.-Taliban agreement as the mother deal underlying the Afghan peace negotiations and Hanafi Feig as the sole religious legal guidelines for the talks. However, Afghan government has suggested alternatives to the Taliban's demands. In news from Nepal, 
Nepal's coronavirus cases tally crossed the 80,000 mark on Friday as the Himalayan nation continues to record new infection cases at an alarming rate daily. The death toll in Nepal has also crossed over 500 amid relaxation of restrictions across the country except the hotspot Kathmandu Valley. Nepal in the past 24 hours reported 2,722 new coronavirus cases, pushing the tally to 82,450 across the country on Friday. At least 520 people have lost their lives due to the virus since January when the pandemic began in the Himalayan nation. Within a period of around 10 months, Nepali capital Kathmandu has turned to be the hotspot for COVID-19, which now hosts more than 25,000 active cases as per the health ministry data. The health ministry has now recommended a nationwide lockdown after new virus cases continue to rise at an alarming rate as health facilities being used for treatment will be overwhelmed after crossing their limit. This comes as few schools in and around Kathmandu Valley were allowed by local authorities to reopen earlier this week. However, in order to curb the rapid spread of coronavirus, prohibitory orders including odd-even rule for vehicles on road were extended in Kathmandu. Tourism business is reviving from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic in hill station Kufri in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state. The deserted roads are getting busy again as tourists have started arriving. Locals are hopeful of more tourist footfall in the coming festive season. The travel and tourism industry in hill station Kofri of India's northern Himachal Pradesh state is slowly reviving from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. The deserted roads have started to get busy with the arrival of few tourists in the region. Over 7,000 people involved in the tourism business in the region are now ready to get started their business and the job which they have lost for over seven months due to coronavirus lockdown. The tourists are enthralled to visit the hills after a long period of lockdown. They are feeling relaxed and are enjoying several activities including horse rides, sightseeing in the hills. और कोविड में काफी परेशान हो चुके थे लोग और काफी टाइम बाद अभी ओपन हुआ है तो काफी मजा आ रहा है इन वादियों में आने का बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है और हर जगह इनको ओपन करना चाहिए और टूरिस्ट को काफी ज्यादा फैसिलिटी देनी चाहिए. Tourism is one of the prime sources of income of the locals. And this sector is considered the backbone for the economy in the state. With tourists flocking the region, those working in travel and tourism industry, including Meher Chand, manager of the Himachal Pradesh Tourism Development Corporation or HPTDC, are now hopeful of more tourist footfall in coming festive season. percentage चलो ऑक्यूपेंसीयां भी जहां होटल थे हमारे वहां ज्यादा रहती थी फिर इस साल तो अभी ऑक्यूपेंसी भी इतनी ज्यादा नहीं है चलो फिर भी है ये मतलब काम तो चल ही पड़ा है थोड़ा तो अब देखते हैं अब आगे आने वाले इसमें अगर अच्छा ये देंगे हिमाचल प्रदेश स्टेट हैज सो फार रिपोर्टेड 3416 कोरोना वायरस केसेस विद 195 डेथ्स Farmers in far-flung areas of India's Jammu and Kashmir are turning to walnut farming on a large scale to earn their livelihood due to its high demand. With increased quality production this year, they are anticipating huge profits. Farmers in far-flung hilly areas in Rajauri district of India's Jammu and Kashmir who are solely dependent on agriculture to earn their livelihood are now changing the trend and adapting to walnut farming on a large scale. The farmers said they have changed focus from maize and rice to walnut farming due to its high demand. They're anticipating rich profits this year due to increase and rich quality production owing to favorable weather conditions. We understood that we had a lot of benefit from the farmers, so we left the farmers and the farmers and the farmers and the farmers the walnut is an accepted source of nutrients, particularly proteins and fatty acids, and is extensively used to make snacks and confectionery. 
Walnut oil, which is high in unsaturated fat, is also used as substitute for olive and other cooking oils. The horticulture sector is a major contributor to the economy of Jammu and Kashmir. Besides walnuts, other fruits such as apples, pears and almonds are the major commercial crops of the Union territory. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.